I'm going to sharpen three shears today. One with my Cymic HD, one with my Cymic Junior. And I thought you'd like to see and watch some professional shear sharpening. I hate watching videos and the person chats and talks and talks and talks at the beginning of it. And I'm like, oh, hurry up and get to what I want to see. That's why I've already started into the sharpening. And I'll be talking through what I'm doing. But this is not a step-by-step how-to. Um, if you're trying to sharpen shears at home, this is not going to help you. What this will do, it'll let you know if this is something you may want to do professionally and get the equipment and the training, or if you're already sharpening. This may give you some tips and ideas on how to do a better job of sharpening for the hair salons, or it may give you some tips on how to do it more efficiently. So we're going to go through, these are some real live shears that came in today from my favorite <laughs> sharpener, Henry. And if you've watched a lot of my videos, and I have a lot of them out there, I've got a lot of shears sent to me by Henry, and I have no idea why Henry sent these to me, what the problems are, or whether he's just sick and doesn't want to do these. But um, I do sharpen a lot of shears wholesale for either other sharpeners that maybe there's, um, they're not up to speed on certain styles of shears and they want to send them to me. I also have some beauty supplies that send me their shears and volume. So if that's something that's of use to you, let me know. But when someone has my equipment and I've trained them, I'd like to videotape what I'm doing so that in the future they don't have to send me these shears and they can sharpen them themselves. So let me show you what I'm doing now. So I'm pre-testing these shears. This one's got, looks like it's got a lot of little tiny nicks in it. Um, this is a rusk shear. It, so I think that's going to be the hardest one to do. I tend to leave the hardest ones to last. This one, the biggest problem is it's too loose. I'm having trouble getting that screw to turn. Okay, I got it to turn. I'm going to grab some pliers for this one. Turned the wrong way. And I find if you're working with hair stylists, trying to explain to them how to turn a screw is foreign to them. So I tell them to think about a jar and how you put a lid on a jar. So that's tight. And maybe the only problem was it was loose. Yeah, it's still not cutting at the tip. You see that? Um, I'm not seeing any nicks on it. I don't think this one has ever been sharpened before. Looks pretty good. The ride line. A lot of people say, what's the ride line? I'm not seeing it. I'm going to turn it back and forth to the light. You see that little shiny line right along the edge? So that would be the second hardest to do. This one's going to be the easiest one, and he sent that in a little separate case with the lady's name on it. So I want to make sure I keep that separate. And this is a Olivia Garden shear. It's got a beveled edge on it. I don't know if it originally did or not. And see, it cuts pretty nice. It doesn't feel very sharp. We're going to do a scratch test, and the ride line looks kind of really wimpy. So I'm thinking someone sharpened this and put that beveled edge on it and did not, did not do it a really sharp angle. Um, sometimes the factory does that because the, if they're not all that sharp to begin with, they'll keep their edge longer. They won't dull out as fast. Hmm. That blade feels sharper than this blade. Well, I'm going to start with this Olivia Garden first, and I'm going to set these aside. So I have a recipe that I kind of use and, and source it. Like anybody that's cooked a long time, it's in my head now. I have certain things I do first and certain things I do second, and they may vary from sharpener to sharpener. But this works well for me, and this works well for training people so that they're, they can be consistent. So this is a 2,000 grit water stone. This is my go-to stone. Uh, it's Nanawa. Most anything you see that I'm using here, we sell. So if you have trouble sourcing it, go to our website. So I'm going to take this apart. And it's good to have a little cup to put it in. And 
yeah, it's definitely hair in here. I want to look for that washer. And I've got a little side pocket thing here where I've got my pick. So see that washer? And I definitely don't want to get any alcohol on this, so I have a whole nother cloth that I'm spraying to clean off my shears. So these aren't going to be that hard. So I don't think Henry tried to sharpen these at all. Because in the past when I've got shears from Henry, um, they were like real difficult to do. And these look pretty simple. So I'm thinking, I don't know the story why Henry sent these to me. I'm thinking maybe he's just too busy at Christmas time to do these. And he sent them on to me because I'll sharpen. For our sharpeners out there, um, I charge a wholesale price. And I have several people that know how to sharpen, but for them it's just easier to send them to me. And usually I'm the one that sharpens them. Um, sometimes Jay does. Um, in the future we may hire somebody. So what I've got is my edge marker here. And I'm going to mark the edge and see what angle is actually on here. Now I've got a worn 600 grit. Um, I've been using a lot of worn 800 grits. And I've been going up to the worn 600 here lately. Um, so I've got it set at 45. Oh yeah, it's nowhere near the edge. It's like way back here. Let's see what angle this person put him at. So I definitely am going to need to go to 600 or something more aggressive because I'm going to have to move them up. It looks like 35 to me. So the scratch test is telling me what's on there. It's not telling me what I should sharpen them at. I think they're 40. I could stay with 40. 40 is not too bad of an angle if someone's not trying to slide cut. Normally though, if I don't know how they use the shears. Normally I have to do them at 45. All right, so it's a couple of interesting things I see here when I do the scratch test. It wasn't what I thought I was going to be seeing, but um, the angle actually changes as it goes down. You see where the, this, the red came off? And as I bring it down, it's at a different place at the tip. And then I want you to also notice the metal shaving stuck there. So somehow that shear became magnetized. And that can cause it to actually catch hair. Sometimes I can, um, it's all like static. So it, it may behoove you to have one of these little things. And I can demagnetize it, stick it through there a couple of times. It took me three times to go through there. But I want you to see the difference in the tip. Do you remember the fuzz on the tip? It's mostly gone. But I gotta get on to sharpening these things or I'll be here all day. I'm assuming the other blades magnetized too, so. And it took me three times through this thing to get it demagnetized. So I'm guessing this might have been sharpened with one of those machines. There, there is one out there that actually changes the angle as it goes down. The angle should be the same all the way down the blade. But this one, the angle at the tip is blunter than the angle in the back. And I can feel that with my thumb. Definitely feel that with my thumb. And it should be the same. And if anything, the tip should be a sharper, thinner edge because it's sort of like a seesaw. There's less power at the tip. So that needs to be sharper because there's le um, you've got more power on the fulcrum on the back. 
Oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? I'm talking and I'm jumping in and I haven't done my rod line first. Have y'all ever done that? Just distracted. I woke up with a headache this morning and I'm just not myself. So let's get this ride line done first. I talked about the ride line, didn't I? This one might need something more aggressive than this because the ride line was gone. Let's see if I can find my Nagura stone. There it is. A little slurry. Oh man, everything got so dusty in here for the knife sharpening. I made a mistake of leaving my toolbox open and everything got gritty. I think even my water stone's gritty. Yeah. Cover up your stuff. Do as I say, don't do as I do. Okay, that should be better. Hear that noise? That's because I'm all the way up to this hilt here. I want to make sure that's touching. Because if I'm hanging off, it's not going to work well. Oh yeah, that looks a whole lot better. Helps to have a clean stone. <laughs> uh, helps to do things in the right order. This shop I'm going to tomorrow, I remember one year, I go over there twice a year. It's a bunch of little Greek ladies, um, Midtown, Atlanta, as sweet as they can be. And they usually get a lot sharpened and they buy some shears. And I rarely do any of them at a 45 degrees. That's one reason they go only twice a year because they are, um, set that out of the way, because they never do any slide cutting, and they're mostly cutting little old ladies' hair. So they don't need anything really thin and sharp. And one time I was in there, and I sharpened a pair of shears, and I was talking to them, because we're always chatting about this or that or the other. You know, somebody's getting married in Greece or whatever, and um, they... <laughs> it was one shear that I sharpened that one blade twice and didn't sharpen the other blade. But... I didn't take it back apart. I just left it together and sharpened that second blade. They have. Normally in the salons, I hardly ever see a beveled edge. And I'd say half their shears are beveled edges. A lot of European German scissors. So that's still looking very convexy. I'm gonna see, I mean, it's very bevelly. I'm gonna see if I can make it look a little bit more convexy. round off that tip. I'm just going after cosmetic now. Other blade. The water there. Got a lot of dust. Water keeps the dust down. It keeps the blades cool, but the, frankly, the blades don't get hot, especially with my fingers on. Because my fingers would burn up long before the blade would. Those knives I was doing yesterday, now some of them got hot. Almost turned blue. But I was using our new 180 grit. Okay, I don't quite have a burr yet. I definitely don't have one at the tip, so I'm paying a little bit extra attention to the tip there. And I always land up and roll to the edge because it helps me get that convex shape better. These are still going to look a little bevelly when I finish just because they're the start of a burr, but it's not there yet. 
There were no nicks in it. It's just a matter of getting it sharp again. This blue film that I use, I like it because when it starts wearing down, it's not like it doesn't cut. It just is like the grit on it is, is smaller. Trying to get that back area. Trying to get that tip. Pretty much got the burr in the center, which is usually the way it starts out. I'm having to feel with my nail because that burr is so teensy. Usually if it's big enough for me to see, it's going to be bigger than I need for just this type of sharpening. If there's, you know, shears that aren't damaged, they don't have a nick on them. And these were the best of the bunch of the three of the cutting. Alright, so my next step is to knock off that burr. And I want to double check the ride line, make sure I didn't remove so much metal that the burr's gone. Uh, I mean, I want to check the ride line to make sure I didn't remove so much metal that the ride line's gone. If you get a great big burr, you might completely remove your ride line and then you've got to kind of have to start over. All right, that doesn't look too bad. So I'm going to polish it now. This is a felt pad. I've got two things on it. I've got diamond spray. And I don't spray it every time. It's just when I feel like I probably don't have any spray on it. And then I've got this white polishing compound. Did you ask me what speed I'm going? I'm going at 30%. It just kind of depends on the sheer of what speed I'm going. Oh man, those knives I was doing yesterday, I was going full blast. I had a machete, I had hatchets, and I had a kukri. I don't normally sharpen a whole lot of different knives and other things. I try to specialize with shears and clippers. But, you know, sometimes something walks in the door and just looks interesting. And... But the whole office smelled like marijuana. The guy was definitely reeked. So I'm polishing. This is going to accomplish two things. One, it's going to make it shinier and smoother. But it's also removing any outside burr that might have been created when I was removing the inside burr. Because if I run this across here, it feels rough. But when I finish with the polishing, it won't feel rough. So now I'm going to clean it off with alcohol. Reassemble it and test it out. And as I'm wiping it off, I'm kind of feeling this. It feels smooth. Sometimes I like to just feel it in my finger and see how much sharper it feels than before. It's just very subjective. But all right, so some of you struggle with putting your shears together. The trick is. Put your washer, it's cup shaped, put it down toward the head. Put that in your left hand. Square peg goes in the round hole. Put this in your right hand that goes down here. Put that finger underneath it. Now this goes in at a cross open. Put that one next. And I'm screwing it down till it feels about the right adjustment, but I'm not closing it. Now I'm going to get my cheap 
single ply toilet tissue, but I'm actually folding it over this time, or I could use a paper towel, and I'm, I'm going to cut. That way, if there's any burr left behind, I've cut it off. Oh, that feels better. Now I'm going to check my adjustment, wiggle it. I might do it one tighter. And now I'm going to check it dry. Thumb out, least pressure possible. Let's check it wet. <laughs> I got the wrong spot wet. Thumb out. It cuts nice. Now, before I say those are done, I'm going to fill that tip. I was thinking I might have to shorten and round it off, but no, that works good. And if I want to check some hair, just for the fun of it, nice crisp cut. And this would, even though it's 40 degrees, I think they could slide with it if they needed to. A um, little bit of oil. This is Sumo Sheer Oil. Put a little oil there. I tied a little ribbon on it for two reasons. One, it makes it look pretty. But number, and well, three reasons. One, it makes it look pretty. Number two, I know that I finished that sheer. I don't do one twice or skip one or miss it. And then number three is that this isn't going to open up in, um, in shipping. See, it protects it. So that one's done. Now, and that's the one that was in the case. So I'm going to do one more on this machine, and then I'm going to go to the Simac Junior. So you can see that the that the work is quality of work is going to be the same. And I'm even going to give the Simac Junior a real challenge. I'm going to do the hardest one of the two on the Simac Junior, which is the one that had all the nicks, this rusk shear. So I'm going to set that down there. And let's run through this one. This time, probably it'll be faster because I won't make the mistake of not doing my rod line first because that's what I'm going to do. Mmm. need my pliers on this one. I've got some of the weakest hands. You see the arthritis that's developed over the years? But I still sharpen. I still crochet at night till my hands get tired. This one has a ball bearing screw. Let me zoom in so you see what I'm talking about. See, it's a ball bearing screw, so you're not going to try to get it out with a pick. You're just going to leave it in there. Now, we do sell additional ball bearing screws in case you this comes out and it gets lost. Don't go looking for a plastic screw on all your shears. Some of them have a ball bearing screw. All right, so let's clean them up with alcohol. Don't get alcohol on your stone. I've had some people come in for training and pick up the wrong bottle to spray. And I usually don't yell at people that come in for training, but that day I yelled. I was like, stop, and let's go right to the sink, let's flatten our stones. So if you ever do that, just go immediately, stop what you're doing, and take off that top layer of your stone. Which is what I should have done before I started sharpening today, because I think it had grit from all that nice sharpening yesterday. Protect your stone. Protect it from alcohol, protect it from grit, protect it from dropping. And this does not flatten it. That just creates a slurry. And I realize a lot of you, this is your first time watching one of my videos, even though I've got hundreds up there about shear sharpening. This might be your very first one. Um, I try to put out a video every Monday. And I usually will run that video. It'll be a full length. I'll do a short, maybe a, later on in the week. But I'll do a full length videos on Mondays. And I usually will run those without any ads. So if you're not subscribing, I know YouTube just went up to their, um, they used to call it YouTube Red, I forgot what they call it now, the premium where you're, you're uh, not seeing all the ads. 
if you're still getting the ads on your YouTube channel, if you subscribe and you catch my videos early, the first few days, I don't put any ads on it. Because frankly, what I'm about is not how much money I can make off of YouTube. It's um, getting all of us to be better sharpeners. I know that sounds awfully altruistic. Now I've got it set on 40. Uh, I might be able to do 45 on these. Let's try it. Um, I teach sharpening. And the more you've watched these videos, the easier it is for me to teach sharpen. And that's what I really love. I really love doing these videos. I even love editing. I know people hate editing videos. They give me a headache, I know, when I sit and edit too long. That's why I had a headache this morning as I was doing a lot of video editing yesterday. And um, <clears throat> I like teaching. Now, I'm seeing something interesting about these shears, and I'm going to let you zoom in here, besides just having a ball-bearing screw. You see, this one is what I call a sword edge. It's like a very, it's like a very wide bevel. And then this one is a true convex. I know they're all nasty because of the work in the rod line and the red marker, but... Um, I'm going to sharpen them a little bit different on here, and you'll see you'll see why. Now, this one is a shark fin, and you see, you know the shark fin by this. If you ever see that handle, it's not a shark fin. Somebody's probably going to get sued. <laughs> so, this one is the sword edge. So, I'm not going to, I'm going to tilt it down in my clamp a little bit more. I could go to a flat plate. But I usually stay with a cushion. Let me see what where that shows. I think I can up this to 50. And I'm not going to rock it. A lot of times these sword edges will be a higher angle than other shears. Yeah. So it's a bevel, but it does have an ever so slightly kind of a convexy shape to the bevel. Some of them are going to be just like a straight bevel, and some of them will have a little, I'll do a little rock, but not a big rock. Now this one had a lot of nicks in it, even though I'm at 50, and I've got a burr. I'm still feeling nicks here, so I want a bigger burr. Did you notice on that last year, I went straight from this worn 600 grit to polishing? That's what I used to do with the 800 grit. When I've worn the 600 down, it actually works like a in between 800. No, I'm not there. I still see red on the edge. Eh, I got it set at 50. I think I'm going to go back down to 45. Every shear is different. I think that's what makes this whole thing interesting. Yes. I talk about a recipe and having the step-by-step, -step, but... It's not like when you cook at home, I'll be cooking by recipe, but I might have to substitute. Maybe, I don't want to get out my mixer. Maybe I just want to do some extra stirs by hand. Maybe I'm following my recipe and I'm at an Airbnb and I'm using whatever things they have to cook with and they don't have this or that and so you have to compromise. Maybe there's an ingredient. I had to have a sweet Indian friend who's a strict vegetarian and I was cooking for her and I had to make cheesecake and some cornbread muffins without any eggs so I substituted on the cornbread muffins applesauce. So, you gotta be willing to 
do whatever it takes. So I've got a burr all the way down. I'm not sure about the last millimeter on that tip. Little Rock on this one. All right, Little Rock, Arkansas. I think that's going to work. That rattle, I think, is these things in my cup over here. So I'm going to leave it at 45. This one is a true convex. And I'm rolling it further back. I'm landing a little bit higher and rolling further back. And I might stay at the edge a little bit longer to get that burr. Oh yeah, got a nice burr. Mm -hmm. Don't have it at the tip. I'm using my eyeballs and my fingers. Looks good. Turn it off. Clean up my stone a little bit. Take my time to find my spot when I'm pulling my burr off. And usually I'll see the nice little burr right across here. I'm not seeing it. Uh, maybe a shadow of one. Pressure is here, lighter out there, but I'm still putting a little pressure there. Nope. Still feeling burr here. I usually won't do it more than three times. I'm still feeling burr here, but Oh, there it's gone. That, usually that last little residual burr will, will um, cut off. Might wipe my stone off. So now back to the polishing. I probably don't need to put more polish on it, I don't think. And I've turned my detente so I'm not polishing all the way to the edge. This is the sword edge side. So I'm not going to rotate it that much. Maybe just a little bit, and I might go up a little faster. And I think that'll do. Remember the first sword edge I ever sharpened? I didn't know what was going on, and I messed it up. <laughs> 30 years of sharpening. I've had a lot of successes, and I've had a lot of mishaps over the years. So this one I'm rocking all the way over. And there's a little information about the patent pending that Shark, Shark Fin puts on their scissors. Kind of lightened up, but it's still there. Our patent or patent pending, I don't even know what it says. I just know it has something. Patent number on that handle. And that is a nice handle. I mean, it's not like everybody that would be the ideal handle for them. Um, I'm feeling a little rough in this there, so I'm going to grab my nail buffer, nasty dirty, oh here we go, from the knife sharpening, because I'm feeling a little roughness here, the 3000 grit side, still feeling something. I might have a little nick right there. Let's see how it cuts. Don't want to have to go over it again. Okay, I'm ready to put it back together. This time I don't need the washer. So I've got the square peg. Goes in the round hole. That finger goes underneath it. Crisscross applesauce. Now this one's got the internal clicker plate, and I usually will let it sit here on my knuckle or thumb. What part of your thumb is that? 
I should know. I was a biology major. So I want that where that nipple is sticking up, the little nose is up. See, I set it up here, right here where I can pull it up closer to my eyeball, and I'm making sure that nipple is up. And then that has to go in here. And then the teeth on this little head of it should fit right there. Are you liking my new camera? Is it giving you a little bit better opportunity to see details? If you are, put a comment below. And thank my friend Todd, who talked me into it. So I'm cutting first, in case there's any burrs left behind. So I'm cutting them off. Checking my adjustment. Now, I've been told that these ball bearing screws don't need to be adjusted as tight as the plastic washers because they usually don't loosen up in the same way because it doesn't have to get seated in there. Um, I still want to have a certain tightness. So, let my secret testing single ply toilet tissue thumb out. And, ooh, it got nice. And I really don't need to go and cut some hair with it because I know the angle on it and I know the edge is good. And these look good. I'll put a little oil on them. I don't oil the whole blade. I'll just do some in the back here. Tie a bow around it. And we're going to do the next shears on the Cymac Jr. So these were the shark fins. The first ones were the um, Olivia Garden shears. And now we're doing rusk. So you're better off in using the Cymac Jr. standing up. So I've got you positioned above my shoulder here. Um, it will use the same exact plates I was using on my HD. So I'm going to use the same plate. The light, there has to be a little metal adapter so that it'll stick on here where because it's not a steel body. And it's not one that's conducive to sitting down. You really ought to stand up or the dust is going to be coming at your face and you have to wear a mask. And I don't like wearing a mask. But I do like it because it's lighter. And when I go in the salon tomorrow, I'll probably carry this one with me just because it doesn't weigh as much. <laughs> We're sending one out today to my brother-in-law, um, Harry, who also has an HD. But he started sharpening. He's in a senior citizen community. And he started sharpening shears, um, riding his electric bi bicycle. So let me clean these off with alcohol. So I'm coloring my edges. And Rusk are pretty good shears. Um, the better the shears, the easier they are to sharpen. Now these were the worst of the bunch. These had more nicks on them than the other two. But neither one, none of them, well maybe that first one had been sharpened before. But these two, looks like I'm the first one to sharpen them. The hardest shears to sharpen are ones that have been sharpened by someone else who didn't have the right equipment or didn't have the right training. Um, so I'm working my rod line. And I'm going to have to shoot another video on the geometry of shears so that I can really explain. <laughs> Someone was asking me why if the, the shears have a curve to them, why do we put them on a flat stone? And I, that gets beyond the, it gets kind of technical, and I need to be able to draw some pictures, so that'll be another video. But let me zoom in here. Do you see that shiny line along the edge here? That's, that's the sharp edge right here. That little shiny line, but that also comes up around to the back, and it ends right about here. Now, it'll end sometimes here, like on this year. Sometimes you'll see it up there, 
but it'll be anywhere between here. So the only part of that shear that's actually flat on both sides is this one. You know, once again, if you're liking the new camera and if you're able to see the rod line better, let me know, give me a like. I make, <laughs> oh, a little over $100 a month from YouTube on the, my videos. So I'm not making money off making these videos in that respect. But I do work for attaboys and say, hey, you did a good job, Bonnie, and that was helpful to me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that little bit of money I'm making because that adds up 12, about $1,200 a year or maybe a little bit more. And I'm going to start not just investing in equipment, but I'm going to start visiting sharpeners. I keep looking here. See, I'm not getting a rod line right there. I see I've got a nice rod line here, rod line here, and then I go here. You see, I don't have it. So I'm still working it. That's kind of an odd spot not to have a rod line. Usually it's going to be further back. So back to what I said I was going to do. In January, I plan to go out the other side of the country and interview a sharpener who is turning 85 years old. He's probably the world's oldest shear sharpener that's still going in the salons. This probably might be some older, but none that are traveling into the salons. Man, that's a bad spot. What is going on there? Is there an alignment issue? Is that the deep nick? Told you these were going to be the worst of the bunch. Now well, let's keep going. So Rusk shears are fairly good shears, and I'd like to set them on 45 if I can, if they'll take that. Now this clamp, the way this works, a little different than the HD. You see it has the numbers and the line there. So I want to line this up to 45 there. You see, 45 there. I'm going to tighten. This This needs to be loose out. I'm going to tighten this down. And I actually tighten it until it moves, so I know I'm at the right spot. So I've tightened it down to 45. And then I'm going to bring in my nut. Now, some of the newer clamps, because we made some changes, have like a wing nut, so it's, easy, it's easier to turn. And um, some of the newer machines are going to be slightly different color. A lot of people have trouble putting this in the clamp. If you have problems, you can stick this in the hole here sometimes. Um, but usually I'm just lay it down. And I want to clamp somewhere on that back ride. Now, I don't think these have ever been sharpened before. I think they were just nicked up. I'm kind of curious. And it's hard to see where your shear ends and begins, so sometimes it's really helpful to make a little mark. Right there. I'm going to go ahead and do both of them. Right there, so you can see right where the end of your shear is. All right. Scratch chest. And I'm looking to see if metal's been removed right along the edge. That looks pretty good. I always leave it on going the direction I would for right-handed shear. And I leave it on and then I just turn it on with the dial because it's just easier for me being right-handed. And then I'm pushing this all the way over to the right and turning this on and I'm rolling it to the edge. I'm still using that worn 600 grit, which is probably like a 
fifteen hundred or something. Now, if you get the light just so, and you watch it, you can sometimes see that burr pop up. This is why a lot of people like this machine. Over, or you can turn the HD up upright too. To me, this leaning over like this, you put a lot of strain on your back. So I'm feeling I got to burr all the way down. And is it bigger than my Nicks? I can carefully run my thumbnail down there. And yes, it's bigger than my Nicks. That fast. That fast. When I get through, even with the talking, because it takes me probably twice as long talking, but we'll be you'll be surprised how quickly I was able to get these three shears sharpened. Now, I know some people, they do this back and forth thing. I don't, because it usually tends to take too much metal off of the tip. Um, and I'm about trying to create a nice convex edge. Okay, I've got it good. Don't have it good back here. That's what's nice about that red marker. I want to get it. that'll do. Do it enough. So, back to my water stone. Remove my burr. Oh, I felt gritty. Remind me next time I do knives in here to do it the other side of the room where I do clipper blades, not where I do the shear sharpening. If you're set up to do all kinds of sharpening, try to keep your knife, your knife sharpening and your gritty stuff separate from your clean things like shears. All right, I'm back to my polishing pad. I might put a little bit more diamond spray and polish on it. This is why when I'm talking to you the video, sometimes it takes me longer. So now, this is a little fiddly. I don't want to leave it at 45, so I'm going to loosen this. I'm going to move this up. Maybe I did a, like a half a turn. So that way I'm polishing close to the edge, but not over the edge. I know some people, they teach about being very careful coming to the edge. Some days, like today, I got a headache. I'm talking as I'm sharpening. Um, it's just really easy to mess it up. So this keeps me from going over the edge. And that looks pretty good. I might feel it with a cloth. That feels smooth. This microfiber cloth will pick up any burr that's left on the outside. Like right now, when I run this across, I know you can't feel it. If you were here, you would. It just feels rough and rough there. And then when I get through polishing, I haven't polished over the edge. If I polish over the edge, it'll still cut wet tissue, but it won't be a nice crisp edge. So you don't want to, you want to polish up to the edge, but not over the edge. And I find that works better by backing off a little bit. And I'm probably like at 48 degrees. I say backing off, I'm actually upping the, the degrees on the clamp. That looks pretty good. Let's see if it's smooth. That's smooth. So let's clean it up and put it back together. And as I said, both of these will do an equally good job. I'll be taking this one with me tomorrow because I will be up on a salon station that will be up higher. So I'm not bending over right now. I'm bending over and I'm already feeling it in my upper back. Um, I tend to have the 
tendency to hunch rather than to bend for my waist, but either one's not good for your back. And I have to watch my back around here because believe it or not, of all the people in the office, except for maybe Kayla, who's 16 years old, <laughs> I have the healthiest back. So this one had a washer. And the washer is going to go on my peg with the cup side down. That goes in my left hand. Ah, and I say the square peg goes in the round hole. But number one, this is kind of square. But both holes are round. Oh, wow, what do we do? Both holes are round, and it can literally go in on either side. So how do we know? So this is one of those shears designed to go for a lefty or a righty. So when it's closest this way, and the head of the screw is facing here, that's for a left-handed person. If the head of the screw is facing that way, it's for a right-handed person. It's still a right-handed shear. So I want to put this peg in here because I'm assuming this person's right-handed and they came to me right-handed. So if you get one of these shears, notice how it came to you because it can literally be put together either way. I'm going to call this a rusk ambidextrous shear if you want to know what this one is. Swivel thumb ambidextrous shear. A lot of people don't know, but the Arius Eichert people, the Arius Eichert factory made some of their original Rusk shears. Um, it was Irving Rusk. And uh, that's one of the factories I've trained in. And, and we do a lot of work sometimes with Ramon Eichert, who comes to our sharpeners jam, and we use him for education. And uh, But they made some of their original Rusk shears. Indirectly, Russ kind of got us in this business because Irving Russ came out with his own shears and then we had another individual that wanted to copy Irving Rusk and he contracted with us to make shears for him and then a lot of details to it. But anyway, he backed out. He didn't have the financial backing he thought he would and so we had already done all the research on creating shears for him and that's when we came out with our first Anika International shear. So thank you Irving Rusk for the inspiration that brought us to this point. Alright, the wet tissue test. Thumb out. Slow catches things fast doesn't that cut good. It felt a little rough to me. So I might go over it a little bit with a nail buffer. It did not tear the tissue. But it didn't feel as smooth as I like. But we knew this was the worst of the bunch, didn't we? That felt better. I train on either machine or the clipper blade sharpening. And I think these cut fine. Let's test on a little bit of hair just because these were the worst. Just to prove that they, they cut good. Nice crisp cut. And those will slide. Point cutting. Did I feel a little pull? Always double check that tip. That tip feels scratchy to me. Just a little bit. That didn't take much, so that's good. So I didn't time myself, but I'm going to oil this, put the ribbon on it, and it is, what time is it now? It's 10.02. What did it take me about an hour to do all three of these shears, and that was with me talking 
and um, switching from one machine to the other. Uh, allot yourself about 20 minutes to sharpen a pair of shears. Realistically, you can probably do them in 10 or 12 minutes each. Uh, but for the amount that you charge, which is normally, I think, national rate is around $30, $35 at this point in 2023, um, that's a lot of money per hour, and uh, you don't need to rush through it. So I'm going to get these and send them back to Henry, and he should be really, really happy with these and celebrate, and I think his customers will be really happy, and I'm hoping you are too, and stay sharp. If you have any questions, put them in the comments, contact us, and uh, uh, I forget to ask you this, but go ahead and subscribe, because that does encourage me to do more videos. Hey y'all, I hope you're staying sharp. This is Bonnie McGowan, your redheaded sharpener here. And if you like this video, I try to post something every Monday. So make sure you subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you'd like to see more videos like this. If you're looking for the tools I used in this video, there's some product links and things in the description. And also you can go to the website, www.banika.com. If you've got questions or you want to connect with me personally, you can always put a comment below, but I've got a lot more links in the description below that will show you how to get in touch with me. I teach in person and online, as well as, of course, these YouTube videos. And let's connect. Uh, let's learn more about sharpening together.